What's up everybody, Tom Fazio here. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, welcome back. If you're not, in this video we're gonna be doing a guided standing meditation session. In weightlessness training, my mind-body performance methodology, standing meditation is a cornerstone. It is probably the most fundamental and important tool that we practice, despite the fact that we train well in terms of the physical, physical strength and conditioning, flexibility, meditation metrics. This is that one tool we might say, this is kind of like the beginning and the end of training itself. So everything that we're doing across the other pillars and other types of training, it's to make this better. Before we get into it, I want you to keep two things in mind. Well, not during the meditation, you should be sensitive and alive within that practice, but going into it when you're training for yourself, right? So there are two things. The first, our body is a tensegrity structure, right? So it's not like, it's not stacked bricks kind of building this frame. It's more like a suspension bridge. Where we've got compression and tension members that together kind of equalize and normalize, create balance throughout the whole body, right? We've got bone, we've got soft tissue. Bone doesn't meet bone. In that way, it's more robust, it's more resilient, it flexes, uh, which is fantastic. It makes us strong, it makes us agile, but the problem there is that in order to resist gravity and stay up above it, we have to create tension in some parts of the body if we have imbalances. So for example, if I start to have a, a bit of a forward lean, well, I can feel immediately I have to create tension in my lower back to keep from falling forward and falling over, right? On a larger scale, or let's say even a more subtle scale, every imbalance like that throughout the body winds up creating other compensations, right? So if we were to look at this kind of dynamic between performance and health or healing, anytime that we're creating tension, we are operating more from the sympathetic nervous system, the stress-based nervous system. And the other nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, doesn't quite engage to its fullest extent until we are fully at rest, fully relaxed. But how can we do that if we're carrying excess tension and creating tension just to keep up off the ground to resist gravity, okay? So that's one of the basic premises is that we're looking for symmetry because if we can create through three-dimensional space this sense of balance, not just wishful thinking, but literal balance on the ground, what happens instantly is that I'm able to release tension from the calves, the quadriceps, the glutes, the core, the back relaxes, the shoulders relax, the face relaxes. And once all these things start to relax, I find that natural sense of symmetry and balance within the movement. So a key element of the practice of standing meditation, this, this is what sets it over and above all forms of seated meditation is that you constantly have to be sensitive to those shifts, those subtle shifts in balance that wind up creating compensations and more tension throughout your frame, right? The less tension we have, the more that we can reduce tension, the more sensitivity comes alive in the body. We can start to feel more, sense more, and the more efficient neural signaling becomes from the brain throughout the body. Okay, so that's the first one. Constantly seeking symmetry, not in the sense that we're desiring it, wishing for it, but we're sensitive to it. Once we sense it, we can start to shift and readjust and remove those points of tension, okay? The second part that we're looking for is this idea of an anchored buoy, right? So a buoy is that thing floating in the ocean, floating in the, floating in the lake, floating in the water, carries it above. The anchor goes down, fastens it to the base of the lake or ocean, whatever you have, and it's the contrast between these two forces, these two tensions, one pulling down and the other lifting. And we're looking for that in the body. And how do we create that? We create the lift through structured framing. As I mentioned, our body is a tensegrity structure. So this lift that we feel staying up above the ground, in some cases it's tension, but when we relax, it's just through the natural balance of forces between soft tissue and bone, between tension and compression members in the body. Okay, so learning to structure the frame, which we actually spend, we spend four weeks learning just the structural element of the framing in my program. It, it takes time. So if you do this for the first time, you know, it's okay. Feel through it, do the best you can. Don't worry so much about nailing every detail because there's gonna be that conflict between hitting that perfect structural frame and actually being present in the moment. A lot of people sacrifice the former just to get access to the latter, but what happens? You might do it once, twice, three times pretty well, but over the long haul, you're jeopardizing your chances of higher and higher levels of meditative practice, deeper and more internal levels of sensitivity, presence, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the lift, getting our frame stacked properly and letting our natural tensegrity, these natural tensional forces, lift us up without any effort, okay? 
And the other side of that is the sinking force. And what is that? That's relaxation. Okay, so the frame allows us to lift. And then when I relax, my body starts to settle in. This is where the origins of rooting come from in, in Chinese Qigong and in martial arts, is that sinking feeling that occurs. And I feel that pulling down. The legs become a little bit heavier. The upper torso starts to elongate. The head starts to lift. And we feel this elongation of the spine, okay? To get there, every joint in the body has to be slightly bent, slightly relaxed, okay? So if we're too tense, if we've got fully locked limbs, if I'm gonna have you put the palms over the Dantian for now, palms and fingers stay alive, right? Some people, when they start to practice, it's, they start to get lazy and they just grab because it's easier. They rest their hands on the belly and then they grab. What happens when we start to create tension in clasp? Well, that energy stops flowing in the same way, right? So these are alive hands, alive fingers. They're gonna stay open, barely touching. Everything is gently, loosely resting. Those are critical details that may not land on the first hearing, but may after several sessions or a month or two really start to make sense. And so before we get into it, I do cover these details in my book, The Essence of Lightness. I dissect standing meditation, the reasons for it, and how to access it for yourself. Also in my programs for the diehards, we do spend a third of the entire process that we go through breaking down the structural elements, the structural cues of this in order to access those modes of presence through this posture itself, okay? So while that's not the entire focal point, we do the conditioning, the strength. It's a very aggressive and fast-moving mind-body program. This is one of the most critical elements and we take that much time because it's that hard to do. So we're gonna breeze through some of the structural elements and then I'll guide you through a bit of mindful awareness and presence through the structure, okay? So to start, feet are gonna be about shoulder width apart, okay? Not too wide, definitely not too narrow. Feet straight ahead. You're gonna to try to splay the toes by planting the big toe and then spreading the others, okay, to get a good grip on the ground. Now, just as we do in the deadlift and in the squat, we're gonna apply a bit of external rotation through the feet, which winds up torquing all the way through the legs into the hips, okay? So a little bit of external rotation. That doesn't mean the feet turn, okay? The feet don't turn with that practice. We just apply external rotation apply a little bit of force and what does that do it creates tension and stability in the hips for the purposes of stabilizing the spine okay so a little bit of that tension now we're going to tighten slightly the quadriceps the hamstrings the glutes okay so now the combination of this tension and torque lifts my frame you should feel that lift up into the frame okay after that gently tense the abdominals Externally rotate the shoulders, which stabilizes the upper portion of the body, which stabilizes the spine. You should feel that tense, slightly tense the muscles in the back along the spine. Shoulders should get a little bit more taut. And now we're gonna lift the crown point of the head, the very top of the head, as if by a string, lifting it away from the shoulders. Now we've got our frame set. This is our alignment that allows us to learn that natural sense of lift. And now we start to reverse that to release the tension. So the shoulders start to relax. Left hand, palm over Dantian, right hand, palm over the back of the other hand, not fingers over fingers, palm over palm, fingers loose and alive, bend the knees slightly, okay? So our frame is set. You could do this with eyes closed or open, doesn't matter too much, but for the next phase, we're gonna try it with eyes closed. Again, standing meditation is not something you need to do, you know, in seclusion, in a temple, in a forest, although it does, help the practice, you can implement the standing posture and the state of presence anywhere. That's the value of this practice. In conversation, standing in a meeting, okay? What this structure does is it allows the mind and the body to connect instantly. Once you start to practice this, you start to set your structure and then all of a sudden you're grounded and, and accessing that state of presence becomes faster and easier, okay? So now we're in our posture. We're gonna do a quick survey throughout the body See if any points of tension still linger. Okay, we're gonna check the calves. If the calves are tense, try to shift just slightly to see if we can alleviate that pressure in the feet and in the calves. Just find that natural sense of balance. Walking up a little bit higher, any tension in the quadriceps, the glutes, release them. 
Any tension in the abdominals, the core, the diaphragm? Is your breathing encumbered? Breathe deep into the abdomen. Try to release any tension in the core. Now make sure that when you brought your hands in front of your body that you didn't roll the shoulders forward. The external rotation, the shoulders back, it is, is what allows us to stabilize the spine, create that natural lift. Relax the shoulders, let them hang down and back. The crown point, the head still lifted, chin slightly turned down. If you're watching this, my chin might look slightly elevated because the camera is lower than my head, but don't mind that. Make sure that your eyes would be straight ahead. Okay, now for the next few moments, we're just gonna settle into this frame as relaxed as possible and just survey the body for any points of tension, allowing your proprioception to feel your sense of orientation, your sense of space. And we're gonna bring our awareness to the abdomen, to the dantian, about two inches beneath the navel, two inches within. As we breathe, the chest remains still and quiet. It's the abdomen that does all the work. Despite the lungs not going down that far, we are gonna practice and visualize breathing into the lower abdomen, not the chest. That's what allows us to base, reduce stress, And for the two final cues, we're gonna gently press the tongue against the roof of the mouth just behind the palate. And we're gonna gently lift the perineum, the muscle responsible for keeping us from going to the bathroom when we have to pee, just slightly. And we're gonna to continue to breathe through the nose. If slightly tensing the perineum has caused any extra tension in the diaphragm, try to be conscious of that and release that. We're going to consider our Dantian, that point in the abdomen, our anchor, that place that we come back to. If we start to lose focus, if we start to get distracted, we just reorient and bring it right back. at some point begin to feel the abdomen come alive. It'll start to become a little bit warmer. Other sensations may arise. Without losing awareness of the Dantian, allow your consciousness to expand throughout the rest of the body. If you become aware of any other points of tension, make sure to release them by gently oscillating and finding that new sense of balance.
There's nowhere else that you need to be right now. Allow yourself to be fully present, to feel what you feel without wanting, without desiring, fully alive in your senses, fully alive in your body. Entire body pulsing with the breath. Allow your focus to become a little bit softer, maintaining the same cues, same state of relaxation, consciousness expanding throughout the limbs, sensing through the torso, breathing as if through every pore in the body. Let's bring our attention back to the abdomen. For a few final deep breaths and breathing in fully into the abdomen. And out. In. And out. In. And out. And you can circle the abdomen clockwise. And you can gently open the eyes, massaging the eyebrows, center to out. Massage the temples, rotating forward. Pressing the point just behind the earlobes, the crevice. Gently pulling the earlobes and massaging the neck. Fingers drawing down and from back to front, and rotating the head. Okay, if this was your first time, awesome, congratulations. Um, and if it's not, well done for coming back. Keep training. As I mentioned, this practice does take time. It might look from the outside relatively simple, standing and breathing, right? But the internal elements and structures are what make this a powerhouse tool of transformation. It's not just about presence. This extends into every aspect of life, your ability to heal, your ability to integrate, your ability to control your nervous reactions, whether you get stressed or can downregulate the nervous system under pressure. It is an absolute workhorse of performance. That's why we practice it and it's a cornerstone of weightlessness because it also offers that addition of that sense of lightness and symmetry that makes you feel lighter, holistically speaking. So take it on, please. Practice it if you have questions, leave them in the comments section. Uh, and again, this is detailed a little bit more in my book. And if you're, you know, a diehard for this kind of thing, I run a program a couple times a year, three month process where we look at the entire mind body spectrum. Um, not for the faint of heart, surely it's a, it's a pretty aggressive program, but we cover a lot of ground and we see awesome transformations.
And last but not least, to manage your expectations. Look, a lot of people will talk about, maybe even brag about, how long they meditate each day. Deep meditation, the kind that actually lowers those brainwave frequencies down to maybe, you know, alpha and theta, ideally, from beta. This is hard to sustain. I mean, practice meditators might get lucky to have, you know, a few minutes, five minutes out of 30 that are deep focus. And so the premise here, while we do want to sometimes stretch the boundaries for our endurance when we're practicing, the objective is really to have those quality moments of experience and connection that we can reproduce. It's a skill that we're trying to activate. So don't get stuck on the time length. You might need a few windows where you do 20 minutes, 30 minutes, just to push those boundaries. What do we want though? A few minutes of quality connection, okay? That's a great standard to set out to do. You can do that by setting out five or 10 minutes once or twice a day, right? That's a fantastic way to proceed. Work through the entire series of cues, you know, that we worked through, the tongue, the perineum, all these details, release more tension, sense, feel, and you'll find eventually that you just start doing this at other odd times throughout the day while you're sitting, while you're driving the car, or while you're talking to somebody. These cues will get set and all of a sudden, you'll feel that sense of relaxation, that sense of control, that sense of integration, and it winds up being organic instead of forced. But it just takes practice. Okay, guys. Any interest in the book or the program, I have links in the description. And until next time, be weightless.